Celebrating 12 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Jeff and Debbie McElroy, part one. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. Great stories about great people whose lives prove that anything is possible. And you're joining us on this set. We used to have a table. It used to be kind of like Charlie Rose. But thanks to our friends down at Nouveau Classics, we have uh, this now. So what do you think? It's nice. It. I like it, man. It's comfortable. <laughs> you, well, we are happy to have Jeff and Debbie McElroy here today. Um, would you please introduce me to your husband? And would you describe for us who this man is? Hmm. This man is um, the love of my life, um, someone who cares for others before he cares about himself. And um, he's just, he's got a great heart. He, um, he's one of those people that ask why rather than getting mad. Does that make sense? Like if somebody makes him angry, instead of just getting mad and being angry in return, he'll, he'll say, I wonder what caused that? Why were they in a bad mood? Is there something I could do to minister to them? And um, he does that with me, even in my really bad moments, and um, <laughs> so yeah, both um, of them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that—that's who I would say Jeff is. Yeah. All right, uh, Jeff, would you please introduce me to this uh, lovely young lady? Yeah, man, that you that you lucked up on. Uh, no kidding, man. I, yeah. I can tell you, just this is proof of the theme. Anything is possible. If this man <laughs> can get this woman to say I do, brother, anything's possible. Um, this woman, I, I think the thing that I can tell you the most is literally I'm constantly looking at her thinking, how? Uh, how did I possibly get to join my life with somebody like this? And that question she said of me asking why, I'm always going, why did she think it would be a good idea to say <laughs> yes to me? I mean, she is, um, I guess this is the best way I can explain it. When we moved into our last house that we're in now, the thing I wanted most was a room where we could put a grand piano in that room and she could sit at that piano and play and sing and I'd be able to hear her no matter where I was in the house. Hmm. And um, I didn't care what the rest of the house looked like as long as that was the format. And I, I think that I love the most is, while I love her voice, it's the heart behind it that I love listening to. And I, I'll hear that voice whether she's at the piano, I'll hear that heart at the piano, I'll hear that heart when she's being a mom to our kids. I'll hear that heart when she's forgiven me of being the bonehead that I am sometimes. <laughs> um, that's what I love the most. Beautiful woman, beautiful eyes, incredible body, unbelievable heart. You're talking that stuff just then. <laughs> I was trying to read the notes that she told me to, to pull some from. Uh, Jeff and Debbie are in uh, marriage ministry, family ministry. Uh, you have a national ministry that's based here in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the name of your ministry? Forever Families. Yes. How did he, how do you get that name? Well, um, it's really important for us, for family, to make really good decisions in the in the here, so that you will last for for the long term. And um, as Christians, we believe that you know when we really have our family focused on Christ, that we become a forever family. And so it's um, you know the sad thing is in our cult culture today, um, even just making it for a few years seems like a long time. And so I'm, I'm hoping for forever family for our marriage to last our entire life and for our kids to have marriages that last for their entire lives. So it kind of is a multi-layered reason for the... I think primarily for me, um, our society tends to lower the bar mm -hmm. as we start to see maybe people not being able to reach the bar anymore. We decide to lower it so that more people can feel better about where they are. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think God's goal for marriage is for it to be a forever commitment, for family to be a, a forever involvement and engagement. And uh, we wanna keep that dream raised. Right. Not, not a bar that's too high for people to jump over. If it's God's goal, He's gonna give us whatever we need to be able to achieve it. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna lower that bar. We, we want people to look for a lifelong marriage. I wanted people to meet you first, and I thought the, the best person to introduce you instead of me was the person that knows you best <laughs> and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I want to take a break, and when we come back, I want to uh, uh, get into why you do what you do, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about the, the big challenge because possibility. Here's the one thing I've learned about possibility is this. Possibility's fuel is faith. Mm -hmm. 
someone has to be the chief believing officer. Mm. That's good. Somebody has to go, I believe this is possible. And I think with families and relationships, both people have to start with believing yes. that right. it is possible, that it's able to be. And so I want to figure out how you got there and then how you got to a national ministry because mm -hmm. it's one thing for you guys to be all googly eyed and, <laughs> oh baby, you look so good. You do too. Oh, and we're that yeah. way all the time. Uh, <laughs> Always. Oh yeah, 24 seven. <laughs> but we, I, want to, I want to peel the onion a little bit. I want to get back behind that. Uh, this is Anything is Possible. We'll be back in just a moment. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. We kind of switched from chasing a career to chasing a calling, yes. I guess. And um, we just, there was this unquenchable passion to help kids. And if that meant we had to just scrape together enough to be able to live, that was fine. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and this is the perfect couple. Jeff oh, no. and Debbie McElroy. <laughs> that is so not true. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would knock that one down. Oh, yeah, I, I knew you would knock that, that one That's down. always been one of our pet peeves. You know, even though we lead marriage conferences, we go to them ourselves. And mm -hmm. through the years, we've made a list of things we promised we'd never make other people sit through. Mm -hmm. right. Like having the couple standing up on stage, holding hands the whole time, Pollyanna all the way, talking about the perfect marriage they have and how we can have the perfect one too. And that just makes me throw up in the back of my throat a little bit. I just <laughs> I can't relate to that. Right. We're not perfect because that's right. And we don't have a perfect marriage because we're in it. Mm -hmm. How do you? Uh, where are you both from? Let me start with you, Debbie. I'm Houston, and um, actually we both grew up right down the neighborhood from each other, mm -hmm. but didn't know each other growing up. So how'd you meet? Houston Baptist University, real small Christian college, and um, we were in a, a PR music ministry group together, and um, it was against the rules for anyone in the group to date, but Jeff went, he had to be intentional about a relationship from the yeah. very beginning. He had to go before a board of a lot of very old Christian professors right. and um, ask for permission for us to even date mm -hmm. in the first place. So, so by the time I asked her dad for his, her hand in marriage, was, already, it was easy. At that what, was the, <laughs> what was the pitch though? Mm. To the uh, board? Yeah. To the um, board of dating. They had me, it was like you see in the movies, they had the board of dating. <laughs> they had this long table, one chair on the other side of the table, mm -hmm. like it was an interrogation room. An hour and a half I got interrogated. <laughs> and I just kept saying, look, we understand our commitment to the group. Whatever happens between us, we understand that can't bleed over into the group. And I'm basically saying that a thousand times over. <laughs> and finally one of them starts laughing and said, we decided before you came in here, we were going to give you guys a yes. We just had to put you through the paces. So. <laughs> so now, you, but you were studying, Mark, what were you studying? Because don't yeah. you have a law background or well, something Well, yeah, like I that? was in, I'd majored in business and mass media. I'd gone to college originally on a debate scholarship. And the plan was to get into a corporation and go into corporate law. Yeah, that debate scholarship. I did not think about that. That, that is not something that I really <laughs> thought through. Right, right. Debate scholarship, he was ranked fourth nationally and um, yeah. That has not been my favorite part of our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but. So yeah, I just always seen myself in corporate law. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I was working for IBM for five years after college, was getting ready to go to Southern Cal to get the law degree, was gonna come back and probably go up to White Plains, work in their legal department. And that's what I'd always kind of planned on doing. Mm -hmm. And then something else happened. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then God decided he had a different idea. That's when did right. you guys get married? Um, August the 8th, 1984. 18th, 1984. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we always laugh. We used Is to laugh at people. Is it the 8th or the 18th? It's 0818. So okay. August yeah. the 8th. Yeah. <laughs> August the 18th. 18th. <laughs> okay. Do you know when you got? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we used to laugh at older couples <laughs> when somebody would say how long you've been married, and they look at each other and try to figure it out, or how old they were, and they look at their spouse to figure out how old they right. were. And now that we're the age that we are, we have to look at each other. And so she remembers, you know, the 08, and that's, that's right. a reminder it's the 18. Ah, I got so. you. So, so you guys get married, you're going to be that corporate couple. What mm -hmm. were you going to do? I was teaching, but I also it was, I had a vocal background and um, was doing performances at churches and concerts, that kind of thing. And so, um, let me see, our dream for our life was that Jeff was going to become a lawyer, work with IBM, make lots of money, and fly me around to do my ministry. That's not what God had in mind. <laughs> wow. so. so when did you figure out that 
God was calling you to do marriage ministry. Mm. When we first left our jobs, actually before we left, we were using all our vacation time to go and speak to youth groups, mm -hmm. uh, lead camps, retreats, youth rallies. We were using all our vacation time to go do that. And so when we first left our careers, it was to do youth ministry, mm -hmm. to just travel around, help youth ministries, work with youth groups, not be at one church, but try to help as many church youth groups as we could. How do you but, make a living doing that? Well, not it, easily. Not easily. Um, a, a lot of uh, camps, you know, we'd get paid for being the speaker and the musicians. And um, so we just kind of... Um, it was it was a challenge. Yes. I mean, you know, we realized we kind of switched from chasing a career to chasing a calling, yes. I guess. And um, we just, there was this unquenchable passion to help kids. And if that meant we had to just scrape together enough to be able to live, that was fine. Our passion wasn't the house and the stuff. It, we just realized. That was okay with you? Yeah. It was um, more okay It was with actually her. okay with me until we actually had to sell the house right after I'd had our first child. And my nesting instinct was really strong and getting rid of that nursery that I had pieced together piece by piece and that little starter home. Um, I, I realized maybe I didn't have as much faith as I thought I did, but then when we decided, you know what, God really has called us to do this and it's a totally different lifestyle. I never expected after going to college that I'd sell our house and live in a travel trailer and go all over the world and um, especially the United States place to place. But it, God changed our hearts. Um, he changed our wants and um, mm -hmm. gave us a faith that was built by not, not having very much. Have you guys ever had a moment because one of the things I want to do is ask you about what makes family possible, yeah. right? Um, but have you guys ever had a moment where you're sitting there, you're about to go on in front of a large group of people, you've had a difficult drive in, <laughs> you I know where this is headed. <laughs> you've essentially decided we're done. <laughs> um, I don't want to be with you anymore. Hmm. We've never had that thought. Have we had a long day of travel and both been on a hard-headed day and been buttonheads all day and before we go up, be in the midst of an argument? Absolutely. We have never once been at a, part, at a point where we said, I'm done, I don't want to do this anymore. Now we've had some, uh, we call it our 18 month rut, a year and a half where we were struggling big time, but there was never that thought. And, and the only thing I can contribute that to is not because I'm that committed as a man, um, my parents struggled a lot in their marriage when I was growing up. And by the time, I guess I was 15 when I started this, Halloran, every night when I was going to bed and I was praying, I had the same prayer I would pray as a part of that prayer. God, someday give me a marriage in which I never even think about getting separated or having a divorce. Every night I prayed that prayer. And so I really contribute more to that prayer and God's power than I do to me or Debbie and our level of commitment. You know, being able to go out and speak to a group of people about marriage or family when things are really tense between the two of us. Um, sometimes, I mean, <laughs> we've told the story before of being back behind a curtain and me saying, oh, no, we're, we're not, you know, Jeff looking at his watch, which is one of my pet peeves. Yeah, While I'm that. talking with him, if he looks at his watch, <laughs> you know, um, that's not good. Yeah, um, it's so, not pretty. <laughs> so, but him looking at his watch and, and him saying, this is not the time or the place. Oh, you did not just go there. <laughs> yes, it is the, the time up. and oh, the yeah. place. Oh, yeah. So we've, yeah. we've had those moments, but... Um, I remember where we were at a, uh, a big conference center in North <laughs> Carolina, had a big um, argument. It was time to start to go out on and lead worship mm -hmm. and then do some drama and then speak and teach. And um, we weren't finishing our argument and we made a commitment to our board of directors. We wouldn't ever get caught up in image management. We will be who we are. And okay. so if we've had an argument we haven't resolved, we have to confess that to our audience. So we go out, uh, I go out first, cause she was saying, you go do it on your own. So I go out there on stage praying she didn't call my bluff cause she played the keyboard, I played the drums. What am I gonna do, rap the worship? <laughs> right. And uh, so she comes out with me, we start this song, my life is in you, Lord, mm. all upbeat. 
halfway through it, we both just stopped. We stopped singing, stopped playing. Because the audience I was, is I was going, physically sick. On? I mean, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't finish the song because it was so not true about my life is in you, my hope and my strength. Because if that was true, then I wouldn't be acting that way behind the curtain with my husband. So, so we knew the words were true. We just knew our life was not congruent to that truth at that point. Yeah. So we stopped playing. Everybody's looking at us, trying to figure out what's happening. And we just had to confess that to them. Yeah. We had to tell them we were not living a life of worship before we came out here. I actually just said, that. I know this is awkward, but I just need to say something to my husband. Jeff, you were right. I was wrong. Um, it wasn't the time or the place for us to have that disagreement. So, um, And then at that point I said, my life is no. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> You're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we take another quick break? Right. Uh, when we come back, I want to ask you, what makes a great marriage, a great family possible. Mm -hmm. The show is called Anything is Possible. What makes that work? We'll talk about it coming up. This is Anything is Possible. Coming up. She looked out at the audience to us and she said, your generation did a great job of terrifying us about divorce. We felt how much it hurts. We don't want to ever be a part of it. This week, our home federal community spotlight is on the Cerebral Palsy Center, helping those with disabilities prove anything is possible. To learn more and see how you can get involved, visit cpcenter.org. Welcome back to Anything Is Possible. This is Jeff and Debbie McElroy of Forever Families. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Our honor, man. So the name of the show is Anything Is Possible. And I'm looking at a, a world where great relationships seem to be more and more impossible. Mm. Um, social media is short-circuiting so many relationships. Mm -hmm. Our attention spans are fractured. Our ability to stay committed over a long period of time yes. uh, is diminishing. Um, the desire for instant gratification <laughs> and for you got to have the new iPhone every two years. <laughs> th there's something about what's happening in our society where people are constantly seeking to press the refresh button. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want the latest, the newest, and it's happening in relationships. All the time. And there are some people who are, instead of looking for what's possible in relationships, they actually have reduced themselves to, these are the worst things I've seen in relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna build a wall around myself so that never happens. Yes. That's the strategy, mm -hmm. not, oh, this is what's possible. Right. How do I have to order my life? How do I do the work on myself so that a great relationship becomes possible? Yeah. Yes. I'll give you a great example of what you just said. We were uh, in a symposium where there were a group of college students and young 20-somethings and uh, then older folks like us who were in this line of work. And they were being interviewed and the moderator said, how come you guys aren't choosing to get married? Don't y'all realize how important that is to the culture, how important that is for you? Why is it that your generation isn't choosing that? And the more questions he got, the more kind of militant and confrontational he got with them. And I just finally had enough. And when I finally got the microphone, I said, I gotta tell you, you're asking the wrong people that question. It is not their fault that they're not choosing marriage. Mm -hmm. That falls on our generation. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I said this, this sweet little girl stood up, up on the stage, a college student, and she said, I'll say what I was trying to work up the courage to say now that he's opened that can of worms. She looked out at the audience to us and she said, your generation did a great job of terrifying us about divorce. We felt how much it hurts. We don't want to ever be a part of it. So you did a great job of terrifying us about divorce, but you failed to inspire us to marriage. Hmm. Wow. That's so, a convicting statement. So what makes marriage possible? I think, first of all, you've got to be intentional. You, you've got to make decisions and order your life and put priorities into your relationship that says, you know, I'm going to be intentional about this. I'm going to work on our, our marriage. I'm going to learn new communication skills if I don't have that. I'm, I'm going to look for an example somewhere else if my parents mm -hmm. or someone else around me didn't show me how to do marriage. And that's so important because the number one cause of divorce is not financial issues or in-laws or outlaws or sexual issues. The number one cause of divorce is drift. So if we're not intentional about keeping this close, then we're gonna drift. How do you do that? We date all, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we try to, get, we have 20 minutes a day where we commit to connect. We try to go on a date for two hours once a week, and then we try to get away on a trip for two weeks a year. Now, that's not always 
two weeks at a time, yeah. <laughs> but where we get away, it may be a weekend here and there, and we add that up to two weeks, it may be we go away for a full week, but we constantly have to push that. If you want to push a reset button, fine, yeah. but push it to reset between the two of you, not to reset with somebody else. That's right. Otherwise, you take whatever problem is here as baggage onto the next relationship. So I think intentionality is key. Mm -hmm. Unselfishness yeah. is what's going to make it possible. <laughs> Which in our culture today that says you're mm -hmm. supposed to be about yourself and do whatever's best for you, right. it flies in the face of that. But I mean, God didn't, mm -hmm. God never meant for us to do this thing life alone. I mean, he specifically made woman to be a partner for man. And vice and, versa. You know, and for us to do things together and, and to, to look for opportunities to connect. And he never made marriage for selfish people to be good at it. That's the hardest thing about marriage is <laughs> it's a daily reflection to me of my own selfishness. Yeah. So it's not typically the marriage that's a problem. It's problems the two people bring into it. And I think the third and most important thing is you got to have grace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for a lifelong, forever family to happen. You know, I know this. Every marriage, there's two people, two sinners married to each other. Every house has a house full of sinners in it. And we've got a choice as to how we deal with those people. We can condemn them or we can give them grace. And grace, by that, we just mean just saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm, I'm going to, especially people who've been married for a while, they've learned to, to do what we call counting the cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it worth even arguing about it? I mean, it, is it going to get us to a better place? Or can I just, like, let it go, not say anything, and not bringing up later, but actually saying, you know what, God, you know about this, you take care of it. Wow. So. Why, don't, why don't we stop here? I want to I make this a two-part, okay. simply because I think the foundation of life is relationships. Yes. And if we don't explore what makes great relationships possible, mm -hmm. we're not giving people the tools they need for all the other possibilities sure. in their lives. So with your permission, uh, yeah, can we please. hang around for part two? We love sure. it. All right, part two coming up next week. We'll see you next week. This is Anything is Possible.